What is serialization? What is deserialization? Can you write a serializer by yourself? Are the existing JSON serializers slow? Find out in today's video. Hello and welcome to Code with Sar. I'm Sar. How are you doing? When this video is released, it's going to be around the Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving! So I'm going to do two things. One, I want to say thank you for all your support, especially for those 200 subscribers to my channel. You are the best motivations for me to keep this channel up. Two, I'm going to make this video relaxed and easy to follow, hopefully, so that I don't ruin your Thanksgiving days. Although technically, you could save this video for later. I'm just saying. All right, let's get started. Today, we're going to seek in to address one problem that is how to convert objects so that it could be saved to a file or read the data from a file and then convert it back to objects. If that sounds familiar to you, that is probably because that you are already familiar with the concept that I'm going to introduce today. That's the process of serialization and deserialization. Let me call out upfront though, the part that I'm going to talk about today is not the persistent, but the serialization and deserialization. Serialization often happen in front of a data persistence. That's because we usually need to convert objects into another form, so it will be easier to persistent. On the loading end, deserialization often happens after we load the data from a file or storage like that, converting the data back to objects so that it will be easier for the program to handle. I'm going to start with the serialize, deserialize object, either manually or rely on a library so that you could form up your own opinion of like which way you like better. If serialization and deserialization is a new concept for you, it is recommended that you watch this section first. Then I'll conduct a benchmark on both methods that will answer a question that is often asked, which one runs faster? Now I'll put them into different chapters, so feel free to jump back and forth or only watch the parts that you are interested in. Let me start with the data contract. In codename k, data point class or record represents for a specific point. It's okay if you don't quite familiar with the project. All you need to know is we have a daytime property called when UTC, then a number field called value, a grid for the unique ID. And this is the object that we're going to serialize or deserialize. Before we do anything, let's create an object of data point. In order to save the result, I'm going to create an output string. I'm going to give it a file name like data.psv. PSV stands for pipe separated values. And then I'm going to use a stream writer to write the stream. The write or write async method on stream writer doesn't take object like data point directly. And that's where I'm going to manually serialize data point to a string so that it could be written. Here, I'm going to be very careful about the format because uh, uh, during the deserialization, we still need to understand the data. For example, for a grid, the format is going to be n, and that's a standard format that converts a grid to its lower case without dashes. Same thing using O for daytime, and a little bit loose on the double value. Now I picked the pipe as a separator here. It could be comma to form up a CSV, or it could be tab to form up a TSV. Now let's run and see what happens. That is serialization manually. It is a simple implementation, but it comes with uh, several drawbacks. Firstly, this is a very simple object. It is quite manageable. But imagine an object that refers another object, which refers another object, and each of them have uh, like five to 10 properties. Things would get out of hand really quick. Secondly, we need to make sure there's no value conflict with the separator. For example, we picked a pipe as a separator, but imagine we have a description property or something like that in form of string. We then would have to make sure that the pipe doesn't show up in the value. Otherwise, we would not be able to tell whether that's the separator or that's just value in the description. One method to overcome the drawbacks is to rely on a serializer to do the serialization. There are various options out there. Some of them are provided in third-party libraries. 
Newton's of the Duchy, a song probably is one of the most popular ones. And then everything's done at 5. There is a JSON serializer built in the done at runtime. There are other dead serializers as well, like XML serializer or even binary serializers. All those serializers do is to convert objects to form that is easy for persistence. Pick the serializer of your favorite. But I think it's not a good idea to use the binary serializers because of the security concerns. I'm going to use the integrated JSON serializer due to its convenience, and you'll see what I mean when it comes to code. Again, I need a stream for outputting. I'm going to call it data.json. And then I'll directly serialize the object and push the results into the stream. That's it. If we run this code, we're going to see data.json showing up. Now the C-sharp object has been converted to a string in form of JSON. If you follow the code and you don't see JSON serializer, it is either you're not targeting .NET 5 or .NET 6, in which case you need to add a new get package to system.text.json, or the namespace is not there. That's a serialization. And deserialization is just doing the reverse reading the stream and convert it back to c -sharp object. Let me punch in some quick code. For a manual deserialization, I'm going to open the file as a stream for reading. Then use a the stream reader. I'm going to get all the text. Now, I know this is a PSV, so I'm going to break those text down by the pipe sign. And then I'm going to parse those uh, tokens back to the properties of the object. It's not very difficult, but there are two things I want to mention. One is it is rely on the positions of the token. So it could become very tedious when there are a lot of properties. The second thing is uh, those parse method. I am assuming they would be successful here, but without error handling, this method is not too reliable. Okay, at the end, I'm going to output the, the object that has been constructed. Now, let's see how the code will look like using a serializer. Still, the first step is going to open the file. Here, the file is data.json. Since the serializer is going to deal with the mapping, what I need to do here is just to tell the JSON serializer, hey, this is the input stream that I want to deserialize it to data point. Let me open the newly constructed data point as well. And I'll let it run. Here's the result. Before we go and celebrate, it looks like the WinUTC value is different. It feels like one of them is wrong. Apparently, the WinUTC value deserialized from the PSV is a little bit off. It is not UTC, it looks like local time. Let me set a breakpoint to check it. Aha, the date time is in form of local. So the value is actually not wrong, it's just the kind, it's not what we expected. The fix is easy, let's just convert it to universal. And let's run it again. And here we go. We just went over steps to do the serialization and deserialization manually or rely on a serializer. Obviously, the serializer method is way simpler than the manual ones, but how do they perform? Specifically, in the context of codename K, every data point will be serialized. So I'm going to build a benchmark for it. To do that, I created a console application 
and the reference the benchmark.net NuGet package. I've also copied the record of data point. Now let me create the benchmark class. Let's consider the serialization first. I'm creating a data point data object for serialization. Then I plan to have a method for each serialization method to serialize the same object. Let's call the first one menu serialize, returning a boolean just in case it had been optimized by the compiler. This is the same logic as we saw before. Now let me create a new method called use JSON CLIs. Implementation is uh, as easy. Then we're also going to return a boolean. Now for deserialization, the first thing needed is uh, something to deserialize from. I'm going to paste in some prepared strings so that you don't have to wait. Moving on, I'm going to create a method called menu deserialize. We're going to copy the code over from the previous uh, example. Now the fourth method, use JSON serializer deserialize. Okay, I want the benchmark runner to pick up those four methods. So I'm going to mark them using benchmark attribute. Okay, so the benchmark class is ready. We need to instruct the benchmark runner where to find out those benchmarks. I'm going to use benchmark switcher this time. Okay, now time for the excitement to run it. Before I hit the enter, try to guess which one do you think runs faster and which one's slower. Now ready? Let's find out. Alright everyone, have a good Thanksgiving. Keep coding, keep improving, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.